Nothing pretty about it, but you're on. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jack. Uh, like I was just saying, I don't know where this season has gone, but I know you look at it from two perspectives because you were basically the architect on the Ottawa side to make it all happen in Belleville. So you've got to look at it from the on-ice and the off-ice perspective. So you look at it, break it down for us as to how you feel the year's gone. Uh, off the ice, outstanding. I, I like the uh, the home we found in Belleville. It is a, absolutely the perfect fit for us. The, the fan support's been great. Corporate support's been good. We're really fortunate to have a, a home like that, and I think it's going to be bode well for the future for us. On the ice, it's been a, a very good year for development. We've looked at every single player. Uh, there's only about two I'm concerned about where they haven't progressed to the point where I thought they would have. Um, I, I like the fact that our young players are getting better. They're playing big minutes. Everybody that's gone up to Ottawa, the coaching staff, the management team in Ottawa has said they've done very well. They've shown themselves well. Uh, Max McCormick b- became an everyday NHL player. Uh, ben Harper was awarded with a two-year, one-way deal, everyday NHL player. Thomas Shabbat. And I think this the number this year was 17 players were called up from Belleville right. this year, which is absolutely phenomenal, the fact they did so well. The team performance is underachieved. We were disappointed with some of the goaltending situations, but it was a a difficult situation managing four, but that was on management. That's not on the goaltenders. Uh, Our special team should have been better. We know that. Uh, So we thought we were a playoff team. We thought we should have challenged, and we're we're dissecting that now to figure out why that didn't happen. So what have you found? And I'm not looking, obviously, at individuals, but what needs to happen for next year that you're going to be concentrating on to see that it happens? Absolutely. We're going to look at the goaltending situation and see we've got some options here. What do we do with our goaltenders and how do we deploy them? Um, we're going to work on getting some more veteran players because we know we've uh, graduated some guys and make sure that we support the young guys with good veterans. I think we've done that. We've made some trades to even to help the team. We've gone out and signed some certain players. When you think about we signed Ryan Scarfo, uh, Andrew Sturtz, uh, Boston Lear hasn't been announced yet, but he's signed to an HL contract, so we've made some good movements here. We're, we're getting some good players in, and uh, I think what has to be is consistency on our special teams, and we have to get our overall play a bit more consistent, and I think we're a good team that can challenge for a playoff spot every single year, and that should be our goal. Well, you just took a question away from me. I was going to ask you about Boston Lear. I know he was on an amateur tryout, and he's going back to school, but he certainly made an impression while he was here, and I think the fact that you've announced that he has signed an AHL contract. Uh, speaks for itself. Then. Yeah, we agreed to terms last week, and we're getting it done uh, this weekend. But it's another player that should be in our lineup today. When you look at our team, I'm very proud of the way they're competing. But you look, there's 12 guys out of the lineup off our roster right now, not including Boston. That's 13 players out, not including Max McCormick, Ben Harper, and Thomas Shabbat, who are up in the NHL. So... Our role is to provide NHL players, which I think we're doing a good job of that, but we want to be competitive here because we want the players to learn what it takes to win. We want them to learn what it's like to play in the playoffs, and we can evaluate guys in playoff situations because if they can elevate their game in critical situations, we know we can depend on them when they come to Ottawa to perform well in the playoffs. I think a year ago it's fair to say that you know fans could look at the Binghamton lineup and say, okay, guys like Jack Rodewald, whether they knew he was going to be eligible to come back or not, now they're a lot more informed, and I'm just using him as an example. But we were basically, it was a whole new team from the Belleville perspective, even though there was some carryover from Binghamton. Next year, okay, you have that familiarity. Fans know these players. Uh, Realistically, what would the turnover be like? 15%, 25%, what should we look at for next year? And I'm not holding you to that, but knowing uh, the contract situations as you do. Plus or minus, uh, it depends because you looked at your whole roster. Over the year, we've used, what, 30-some players. So uh, we will have probably five or six new faces in the lineup next year, maybe more. As we said, guys like Aaron Luchuk and uh, Logan Brown and Christian Willannon are all trying out for Ottawa. They expect to make Ottawa, but if they don't, they will play in Belleville next year. They're signed players that will play in Belleville. Alex Formington and Parker Kelly, who Belleville fans got to see, either have to make the Ottawa Centers or have to go back to junior next year. But that's who you're going to see in two years down the road. So I think we there could be a turnover as much as five or six players and uh, in, in some key positions. And I think that some of the young guys are ready to take that next step and really take their game to the next level. I know Kirk Kleinendorst has talked about his defense, and, and he likes his defense, and he likes guys. Like a Patrick Seelaw, for instance, he's one 
that would be a free agent, right? Right. Uh, but beyond Patrick, and, and that's a decision that uh, you've got to make based on what he's done for the uh, for the organization this year. But you see a lot of returning bodies in the back end, and do you like the development of the? I mean, let's face it, they're young. Yarosh. Uh, England. And, and England and Les Jouan. I mean, uh, that's a pretty young group. Patrick Seelow is still a young player. Yeah, yeah, 23. We look at these guys. Absolutely. And we're very proud of them and the way they've developed. There was times this year we weren't sure if we were going to keep Max Lejoie here or send him back to junior, but I think we made the right decision to stick with him, and he's become game in, game out, one of our best defensemen, and he, it's going to pay off for him down the road. We had to take some lumps with him, and he knew that, but Kurt was good with him. Tony's been good with him. Losing Paul Boudelier during the season hurt our young defense because he was such a good guy at working on development aspect that that hurt our team, but that's a situation we could control. So is this a typical year with the call-ups and with the injuries and to be down as many players as Belva would have been on a lot of nights? No. I mean, we've never... I've never seen it where we've been down to four or five defensemen for a game. We had nobody else to call up anymore. We were looking at other teams that get guys on PTO. So it was a difficult year with the number of injuries in Ottawa and uh, the situation we had here. But at least we have a good evaluation tool of where players are at because they had to perform. And I think we're really happy with Colin White. We're really happy with Philip Schlappick. Gabriel Gagne had some really great spots in the season, but he's still got a lot of things to work on his game. Jack Rodewald was up and down, but now he's got his game going in the right direction. Uh, Jimmy O'Brien was a big surprise. He's had a great year. It earned a contract. It's a great story. And just the fact that we had the whole Chris Kelly experience, it was good for everybody to learn from Chris, and it was good for him because at his age, we helped him, catapult him into the captain spot on the Team Canada. Talking with uh, Belleville Senators GM and Ottawa Assistant GM Randy Lee. So walk us through the process over the next couple of months. What are the key dates that Belleville fans should really be paying some additional interest on? Uh, because what happens in Ottawa most of the time is going to affect what happens in Belleville. Well, the big thing is going to be, too, is the draft lottery to see where that shakes out and see what type of player we get in that, because that's going to be a top-five pick, which is a huge thing for an organization. Uh, we're going to have to put qualifying offers in on all our restricted free agents, and if we don't qualify a guy, then he becomes a, a free agent, but they'll have to make decisions on all those players, and that's a nervous time for, for players. Uh, the draft, approaching the draft, we're going to be active in the draft. There's still going to be some free agents that we're going to look at for signing. Uh, there's the Ottawa free agents, and then there's the uh, American League free agents, and then there's AHL signings. So there's a lot of movement going on. Our development camp starts right after the draft, so anybody that's in Belva that wants to come and see the future players, there's it's open to the public to come down and see the development camp in Ottawa. It's a great way to get a, a good feel of who's coming, what the next up-and-coming guys. And you get to see them on the ice together. And then throughout the summer, we're going to be working hard to develop a really good program and uh, figure out where we're going with this team to take it to the next level. So now Belleville is in. You don't, I, I mean, a year ago, you had a lot of <laughs> work to do yeah. to get this franchise on the ice at the Urban Arena. Now that that's all done, the building is all done. We just talked about the development camp. Do we see at any point anything like the development camp or the rookie camp uh, that I know I think is in Toronto this year, if I'm not mistaken? Laval. Laval. Laval? Okay. And they've just come in. Do we see an NHL exhibition game? Are any of those in our future? That's a Rob Maloney question, but we were talking about those types of scenarios just before the game tonight. So I'll leave that to Rob because that's his area. But we are looking at some really creative things to do. We would like to at one point host the rookie tournament. So rotate it between Toronto, Montreal, or Laval, and uh, Belleville would be a great thing because I think the Belleville fans would love that. It's a great experience. So that's in the works. We're looking into things like that. Uh, there's other things like uh, black and white games. Uh, our training camps are open, so players want to or fans want to come down and see that. There's a lot of neat things where now they can get involved because they've got an affiliation with these players. Well, and as it turns out, Rob Maloney's coming on during the next Thank intermission, you. so I will be sure to ask him about all of that. It's, it's been a hoot, uh, Randy, and uh, for the first year, and the, the support has been there, obviously. I think the fans got a lot more than they thought they were going to in terms of the level of hockey, and a lot of that is thanks to your efforts, and hopefully it's uh, a mutual thing all the way across. Absolutely, and, and the people of Belleville, the fans supporting it, and City Council. And as a gesture of our appreciation, we brought in Mayor Tasso Christopher to the dressing room last night. Uh, the players showed their appreciation. They took a photo with him. Just It was a great group thing, just uh, off the cuff. And just to say thank you for him and all the hard work that you guys and the council did, because I think the fans now realize
I mean, it was a big investment, but the bottom line is they had to get the ring standard size to play in the American League. And if you didn't do that, you weren't getting a team. So that was a big investment, but they did it. Now they've got the team, and they've got a... Some, we got a home now for a minimum of eight years, and we're very proud of that. And we wish you all the best in this off season, and look forward to the news as it develops. Okay, thanks, Jack. Appreciate Randy Lee, GM of the Belleville Senators and Assistant GM of the Ottawa Senators.